Okay, we're uh, working on the clock on this Crossley Playtime 124 Grandfather Clock. Um, the clock does not run. I've plugged it in briefly, and I hear a little bit of a normal hum that you would hear, but I imagine this thing is all gummed up. So I'm going to just leave the, uh, the camera going here. This way I can watch all the steps that I take and put it back together. And of course, when I publish the video, I'll edit it. So, so the first thing we're going to try to do is take off these these arms, these, uh, I'm not even sure how you do it. I would imagine this is a press fit. I don't want to damage this face. I know that uh, Radio Days actually sells this dial, replacement dial. <clears throat> I do see a little set screw in there. Not a set screw, it's a, it's a knob, nope. Let's leave that for a moment. If I remove this, that's going to damage it, so we can't do that. And you'll notice that this clock is a start, manual start clock. So push in, turn left, but when I, I can't even turn it. So it's, uh, it's gummed up. Let's see if this works. Yeah, that part works. But it is very, very stiff. Let me take a closer look at this thing and see if I can figure out how to get those arm those hands off. has to be a press fit. It has to be. There it comes. Okay, there it is. Just got to pry it up gently. Now it looks like there's a uh, little threaded nut there. So we're going to take our duckbill pliers here and see if we could turn that. And that should release the two hands. There it comes. Good. So far, so good. I'm sure this thing hasn't been taken off in 90 years. Okay, there it is. Put that here, and this should lift right off. And there's a washer. And there's another washer. And then we have our minute hand. Again, that looks like a press fit type of deal, maybe. Let's see. Let me 
maybe it screws off? Let's see. Looks like it's threaded under there. No. Whole mechanism seems like it's loose. There it goes. So it looks like there's a little notch there. See that little notch there at the uh, two o'clock spot? Okay, that should free up the mechanism. Now we can take this off. Looks like they have this glued down to that backing, possibly. Let's be really careful. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Do this. I don't want to lift off that cardboard, so we're going to take a razor and just gently score underneath this metal. We're going to hold it flush to the metal. Let's see if that releases it any better. See, they had some uh, some kind of glue there or something. Interesting. All right, so we got this up without any damage. Let's just look at the face and make sure. So the face, we're going to definitely put this somewhere for safekeeping. Let's put these screws back in so we don't lose them. The top screws are the long ones that actually hold it into the frame of the cabinet. Okay, that's that. And then the, the hands. I'm going to put all the parts in this little bottle here. Two washers. Second hand minute hand, and hour hand. Okay, I'm just going to leave that right there for now. Let's see what we got here. So it looks like there's uh, some kind of varnish on here. This must be the glue. So it looks like this is attached to the plate with those with those nuts. I don't see any screws coming through on this side, so they must be inside the cavity. So let's remove those and see what happens. I 
This is probably too big. Yep. Perfect fit. Let's remove one. Okay. There's no washers. There's a lot of varnish down there though. I'm actually amazed that it's still shiny. There's three. I wonder what kind of metal that is. You gotta remember, this is 1931. I don't think they had aluminum plating then. But look here, this is the original color. So maybe it is aluminum. It feels like it's light. Hmm. Okay. So it looks like this gear comes up. There's two uh, there's two nuts here which probably hold this mechanism there. Let's move these over here. Let's see what we got here. I imagine this whole thing will come out of the, of the can when I do this. Here it comes. As long as no springs go flying, we'll be in good shape. There's the name plate. This knob here, which is used to set the time, is in the way. I'm trying to understand if that's a press fit deal. Attached to this gear right here. Okay, with this top removed, there's two holes right here and right here. And those two holes line up with this gear right here. Let's zoom in. Those two holes line up with this gear and this gear, which has a spring on it. Okay? And there's also a hole in the center of the clock that this gear lines up in. So, and this is a double gear. So let's see what happens when we take the top one off. 
There's the top gear. And then this is the next gear right here. And this is the gear that's underneath that. And this is the gear that's underneath that one. And we're going to remove that spring. And this is the arm that you have to start the clock with. Okay. First thing we're going to do is put these gears in something to protect them. <clears throat> now let's check them first. The teeth look good. I don't see anything stripped on that one. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. It's interesting, I don't see a drop of grease on this thing. Interesting. Let's get these uh, Let's get these gears in, in a place to protect them. Okay, they should fit in here just fine. And our spring. Okay. These are the two knobs that, uh, this is the one you set the time with, and this is how they start the clock. Now I notice that there's two screws here. I don't know if that. Let's see what this does. Let's see if I'm if I can. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to remove this with this gear here. Looks like it unscrews. Maybe let's see. It does. So it unscrews from the top. Once you hold that gear, you can get that out like that. Okay? And I would imagine this is the same deal. <clears throat> Actually, no. This one will, f will slip through the hole. So let's see if we can remove this cavity here. There you go. There's a spider from 1931. Poor guy. Okay, this is good. Let's remove the old spider. Okay, we'll throw him out. So this gives me access to change the power cord, which is good because this power cord is shot. <clears throat> and this is the main motor, right here. I'm trying to understand what kind of motor it is and how it's connected. There seems to be a coil here. It looks like if I take these two nuts off here, the top of that motor will come off. Let's live, live life dangerously here. There's one. There's two. This bar should lift up. Let's see what this does. This comes right out. This is a sealed unit. Hmm.
So I guess this may work by magnetism. I don't quite know. All I know is it's not turning. This thing looks like it's soldered shut or welded shut. What I don't know is if, if this is supposed to be free in turn or not. I would imagine it does. Without this, no clock. Okay, so this, um, this synchronous motor, which is what this clock uses, seems to be jammed. That's probably why it doesn't work. This gear is not turning. And I noticed that they have this thing sealed with uh, solder. So, what do we have to lose? So we're going to take that solder off and see if we can take a peek in there and see what's holding it up. So, wish me luck. Let's put this on the how to setting. Okay, just an update. I put my uh, soldering iron around here and as I heated it up, when I shook it, I started to hear something. So I put a little w WD-40 down on this gear here, and look, she spins now. So there was probably some gunked up grease in there or something that melted, in, I think, and, uh, and we freed it up. So we're going to put it back together to see if it works. Be right back. Look what we have here, folks. The motor's working. So I thought this was going to be a total loss, but now we're going to be able to use the clock, which is good. So I'm going to take this thing apart again, and I'm going to uh, give that a good shot of WD-40, let it soak, um, and then uh, see how uh, how well it works. I'm going to turn the power off for a minute. Remember, this is a, uh, a self-starting clock, so when you turn the power back on, it's not going to turn by itself. You have to kind of help it along. So power's on. Let's see. I don't know how much you're supposed to turn it, or which direction. Let's see. Now remember, this is AC in here, so you got to be careful. There you go. Now there's a whole bunch of gears here, so the gear ratio is going to help make that easier to do when you actually do it. But I'm able to start the clock up. Good, good news. Okay. Let me stop this for now. Now I'm going to do what I said, clean all this up, and then we're going to put it all back together and see if it runs. Okay? Be back. Okay, I've taken this uh, synchronous motor and I've given a good cleaning with alcohol. Um, there was a lot of flux all over this thing. Obviously, it was soldered. Um, I also ran the soldering iron around here and made sure this is all sealed up because I did get the iron on there originally to try to remove it. <coughs> I've also oiled the engine. <laughs> so it's good. So this thing's going to work well. I've also uh, shined up a couple of the pieces <clears throat> and the next step is going to be to put it back together and uh, see if the clock will run. Now I'm going to need to replace this cord so I'm going to do that while I'm in here. Um, there is a, a cloth power cord in here that's at one point someone did a tape job um, and I've read some stuff about this thing being a little dangerous because there's no ground um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get concerned about that right now. There really is no way to connect a three prong cord to this thing that I can see. So um, so we're just gonna go with a two prong cord for now, and um, and we're gonna worry about that later. So um, so I think what I'll do is um, I'll put all this together if I can. <laughs> Got to see how the gears go, and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, be back. One last thing, on this motor cover there's a little indent right there and that's where the main gear goes in the center. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of marking it with a, with a red marker so when I put this thing back on I have it aligned correctly. So this goes in the hole like so. I'm going to put this plate on loosely and I'll see if I can show you what I'm talking about with the red dot. and tighten that. When you look on this side, this hole right here is where I'm going to look for the red dot. 
And there it is. You're probably not going to be able to see that. But it's this hole right here. So my red dot's there. Now we're going to simply just put a little pressure, tighten these screws down. Now I know it's in exactly the same spot that it was before. Okay, let's tighten these up. Okay, that motor is in the right spot now. There's the red dot still there. Okay, be back. Before I finish cleaning this up, I want to show you how well this cleans up. Removing the uh, 80 years of cigarette smoke. Look what's really there. Nice. Nice shiny uh, aluminum. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Not the brown. Okay, we've got the clock back together. And you'll see that it's running. I have a little piece of tape here for the second hand. And you'll see that it's running, which is great. One... Uh, one funny thing that it's probably worthwhile to mention, when I first plugged it in and started it, it was running backwards. And I was like, damn, i got to change the wiring. And then I thought about it for a second and said, no, that's not right. So I took a look at the instruction plate, and it says, to start, turn left and go. Apparently, I turned right. So you can have this cl clock run backwards if you want, just by turning it to the right to start it. Pretty cool. So, um... I'm going to put this assembly back together, and uh, we're going to call the clock resolved. There's the plate. And I'm going to put a fuse on this connection, because there's no fuse here, right? So um, I'm going to do something inside the cabinet with the power and fuse it so that I've got protection there. So anyway, let me put this back together, and then we'll wrap up on the clock. Okay, we're putting our hands back on. I've got the uh, minute hand on, the hour hand, I've reinstalled that little nut there. Now we're going to put the second hand on. And I think it's just a press fit. Yes it is. Okay, let's see if we can start this thing. I'll turn on the power. Power's on. And we're going to turn it to the left. Look what we have here. That's a better shot. Probably the first time this clock has run in 50 years maybe, who knows, right? Nobody knows the history of these things. But that clock is running. So we're gonna, we're gonna set the time and then we're gonna see if it actually keeps time because I heard that's common with these things. But um, but I'll do that. I'll cover that in the next video for this uh, for this series. So um, that's it for this one. I'm going to go back to my uh, to my amplifier project. But while I was waiting for a part, I thought I would knock this one out today. So we have a clock. Thanks, everybody.